Section 4 of Aesop's Fables, a new revised edition. The Wolf and the Lion A wolf, having stolen a lamb from a fold, was carrying him off to his lair. A lion met him in the path, and, seizing the lamb, took it from him. The wolf, standing at a safe distance, exclaimed, You have unrighteously taken from me that which was mine. The lion jeeringly replied, It was righteously yours, eh? Was it the gift of a friend, or did you get it by purchase? If you did not get it in one way or the other, how then did you come by it? One thief is no better than another. THE KING'S SON AND THE PAINTED LION A king, who had only one son, fond of martial exercises, had a dream in which he was warned that his son would be killed by a lion. Afraid lest the dream should prove true, he built for his son a pleasant palace, and adorned its walls for his amusement with all kinds of animals of the size of life, among which was the picture of a lion. When the young prince saw this, his grief at being thus confined burst out afresh, and standing near the lion, he thus spoke, O oh, you most detestable of animals! Through a lying dream of my father's, which he saw in his sleep, I am shut up on your account in this palace as if I had been a girl. What shall I now do to you? With these words, he stretched out his hands toward a thorn tree, meaning to cut a stick from its branches that he might beat the lion, when one of its sharp prickles pierced his finger and caused great pain and inflammation, so that the young prince fell down in a fainting fit. A violent fever suddenly set in, from which he died not many days later. We had better bear our troubles bravely than try to escape them. THE TREES AND THE AXE A man came into a forest, and made a petition to the trees to provide him a handle for his axe. The trees consented to his request, and gave him a young ash-tree. No sooner had the man fitted from it a new handle to his axe, than he began to use it, and quickly felled with his strokes the noblest giants of the forest. An old oak lamenting when too late the destruction of his companions, said to a neighboring cedar, The first step has lost us all. If we had not given up the rights of the ash, we might yet have retained our own privileges and have stood for ages. In yielding the rights of others, we may endanger our own. THE SEASIDE TRAVELERS some travellers, journeying along the seashore, climbed to the summit of a tall cliff, and from thence looking over the sea, saw in the distance what they thought was a large ship, and waited in the hope of seeing it enter the harbour. But as the object on which they looked was driven by the wind nearer to the shore, they found that it could be at most a small boat and not a ship. When, however, it reached the beach, they discovered that it was only a large faggot of sticks, and one of them said to his companions, We have waited for no purpose, for after all there is nothing to see but a faggot. Our mere anticipations of life outrun its realities. THE SEAGULL AND THE KITE A seagull, who was more at home swimming on the sea than walking on the land, was in the habit of catching live fish for its food. One day, having bolted down too large a fish, it burst its deep gullet bag and lay down on the shore to die. A kite, seeing him, and thinking him a land bird like itself, exclaimed, You richly deserve your fate, for a bird of the air has no business to seek its food from the sea. Every man should be content to mind his own business. THE MONKEY AND THE CAMEL The beasts of the forest gave a splendid entertainment, at which the monkey stood up and danced. Having vastly delighted the assembly, he sat down amidst universal applause. The camel, 
envious of the praises bestowed upon the monkey, and desirous to divert to himself the favor of the guests, proposed to stand up in his turn and dance for their amusement. He moved about in so very ridiculous a manner that the beasts, in a fit of indignation, set upon him with clubs and drove him out of the assembly. It is absurd to ape our betters. THE RAT AND THE ELEPHANT A rat, traveling on the highway, met a huge elephant, bearing his royal master and his suite, and also his favorite cat and dog and parrot and monkey. The great beast and his attendants were followed by an admiring crowd taking up all of the road. "'What fools you are,' said the rat to the people, "'to make such a hubbub over an elephant. Is it his great bulk that you so much admire? It can only frighten little boys and girls, and I can do that as well. I am a beast as well as he, and have as many legs and ears and eyes. He has no right to take up all the highway, which belongs as much to me as to him. At this moment the cat spied the rat, and jumping to the ground soon convinced him that he was not an elephant. Because we are like the great in one respect, we must not think we are like them in all. THE FISHERMAN PIPING A fisherman, skilled in music, took his flute and his nets to the seashore. Standing on a projecting rock, he played several tunes in the hope that the fish, attracted by his melody, would of their own accord dance into his net, which he had placed below. At last, having long waited in vain, he laid aside his flute, and, casting his net into the sea, made an excellent haul. THE WOLF AND THE HOUSE-DOG A wolf, meeting with a big, well-fed mastiff, having a wooden collar about his neck, inquired of him who it was that fed him so well, and yet compelled him to drag that heavy log about wherever he went. The master, he replied. Then said the wolf, May no friend of mine ever be in such a plight, for the weight of this chain is enough to spoil the appetite. Nothing can compensate us for the loss of our liberty. The Eagle and the Kite An eagle, overwhelmed with sorrow, sat upon the branches of a tree in company with a kite. Why, said the kite, do I see you with such a rueful look? I seek, she replied, for a mate suitable for me, and am not able to find one. Take me, returned the kite. I am much stronger than you are. Why are you able to secure the means of living by your plunder? Well, I have often caught and carried away an ostrich in my talons. The eagle, persuaded by these words, accepted him as her mate. Shortly after the nuptials, the eagle said, Fly off and bring me back the ostrich you promised me. The kite, soaring aloft into the air, brought back the shabbiest possible mouse. Is this, said the eagle, the faithful fulfillment of your promise to me? The kite replied, That I might attain to your royal hand, and there is nothing that I would not have promised, however much I knew that I must fail in the performance. Promises of a suitor must be taken with caution. THE DOGS AND THE HIDES Some dogs, famished with hunger, saw some cowhides steeping in a river. Not being able to reach them, they agreed to drink up the river, but it fell out that they burst themselves with drinking long before they reached the hides. ATTEMPT NOT IMPOSSIBILITIES THE FISHERMAN AND THE LITTLE FISH A fisherman, who lived on the produce of his nets, one day caught a single small fish as the results of his day's labor. The fish, panting convulsively, thus entreated for his life. "'Oh, sir, what good can I be to you, and how little am I worth? I am not yet come to my full size. Pray, spare my life and put me back into the sea. I shall soon become a large fish, fit for the tables of the rich, and then you can catch me again and make a handsome profit of me. 
The fisherman replied, I should be a very simple fellow if I were to forego my certain gain for an uncertain profit. THE ASS AND HIS PURCHASER A man wished to purchase an ass, and agreed with his owner that he should try him before he bought him. He took the ass home and put him in the straw yard with his other asses, upon which he left all the others and joined himself at once to the most idle and the greediest eater of them all. The man put a halter on him and led him back to his owner, saying, I do not need a trial. I know that he will be just such another as the one whom he chose for his companion. A man is known by the company he keeps. THE SHEPHERD AND THE SHEEP A shepherd driving his sheep to a wood saw an oak of unusual size full of acorns, and spreading his cloak under the branches, he climbed up into the tree and shook down the acorns. The sheep, eating the acorns, frayed and tore the cloak. The shepherd, coming down and seeing what they had done, said, Oh, you most ungrateful creatures! You provide wool to make garments for all other men, but you destroy the clothes of him who feeds you. The basest ingratitude is that which injures those who serve us. THE FOX AND THE CROW A crow, having stolen a bit of meat, perched in a tree and held it in her beak. A fox, seeing her, longed to possess himself of the meat, and by a wily stratagem succeeded. "'How handsome is the crow!' he exclaimed, in the beauty of her shape and in the fairness of her complexion. "'Oh, if her voice were only equal to her beauty, she would deservedly be considered the queen of birds. This he said deceitfully, having greater admiration for the meat than for the crow. But the crow, all her vanity aroused by the cunning flattery, and anxious to refute the reflection cast upon her voice, set up a loud caw, and dropped the meat. The fox quickly picked it up, and thus addressed the crow, My good crow! Your voice is right enough, but your wit is wanting. He who listens to flattery is not wise, for it has no good purpose. THE SWALLOW AND THE CROW The swallow and the crow had a contention about their plumage. The crow put an end to the dispute by saying, Your feathers are all very well in the spring, but mine protect me against the winter. Fine weather friends are not worth much. THE HEN AND THE GOLDEN EGGS A cottager and his wife had a hen, which laid every day a golden egg. They supposed that it must contain a great lump of gold in its inside, and killed it in order that they might get it, when to their surprise they found that the hen differed in no respect from their other hens. The foolish pair, thus hoping to become rich all at once, deprived themselves of the gain of which they were day by day assured. THE OLD MAN AND DEATH An old man was employed in cutting wood in the forest, and in carrying the faggots into the city for sale. One day, being very wearied with his long journey, he sat down by the wayside and, throwing down his load, besought, death to come. Death immediately appeared in answer to his summons, and asked for what reason he had called him. The old man replied, That, lifting up the load, you may place it again upon my shoulders. We do not always like to be taken at our word. THE FOX AND THE LEOPARD The fox and the leopard disputed which was the more beautiful of the two. The leopard exhibited one by one the various spots which decorated his skin. The fox, interrupting him, said, And how much more beautiful than you am I, who am decorated not in body, but in mind. People are not to be judged by their coats. THE MOUNTAIN IN LABOR A mountain was once greatly agitated. 
loud groans and noises were heard and crowds of people came from all parts to see what was the matter while they were assembled in anxious expectation of some terrible calamity out came a mouse don't make much ado about nothing end of section 4